everyone. My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to talk about stag vixen relationships and this one was so interesting because when I decided to start researching this before making this video I thought I knew something about this and it turns out I really did not. So today what we're going to do is talk about what stag vixen dynamics are we're going to talk about related terms, how it connects to power exchange and BDSM, how to try it for yourself, and as always, some myths, misconceptions, and assumptions that people make about this dynamic. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started by talking about a definition from one of the websites I found while researching for this video, and they do such a good job, I couldn't have phrased it better myself, so I'm going to go ahead and quote directly from them. A vixen is a woman in a committed relationship who has sex with men, referred to as a bull, other than her partner, who is called a stag. A vixen's dates with her bulls are done with the knowledge and encouragement from her stag, and therefore she is in no way cheating on her partner, with no element of domination meant on her stag, which is how it differs from a cuckold relationship. The terms vixen and hot wife seem relatively synonymous and interchangeable, but recently I've been favoring stag vixen as a relationship descriptor over hot wife. A stag is a man in a committed relationship who enjoys it when and encourages his female partner to have sex with other men. The stag might enjoy watching his partner, usually called a vixen when paired with the stag, but hot wife is fairly interchangeable, participating with her or simply knowing it is occurring or hearing about it after. Unlike a cuckold, there is no element of submission or humiliation for the stag. And then finally, there is a hot wife, who is a woman in a committed relationship who has sex with other people. I think it's safe to say mostly other men, who are often called her bull, because both she and her partner think it's sexy for her to do so. Hot wifing differs from cuckolding because it lacks the humiliation aspect. However, given how masculinity is perceived, there are some people who argue that there is always an element of humiliation if your wife has sex with other men. We wholeheartedly disagree. After all that, you might be thinking, okay, there's stag and vixen and a cuckold and a hot wife and a bull and that's a lot of terminology. Why would I pick stag and vixen over anything else? And before we move on to talking about other subjects in this video, I would first like to read another quote from that blog talking about why they prefer stag and vixen. Firstly, hot wife refers to only the woman in the relationship, but the act of hot wifing involves consent from both the man and the woman. It requires that the couple be involved together. There is no term that goes along with hot wife that describes the man with a hot wife other than awesome. I have a similar issue with the term cuckold in that there isn't a word that defines the woman who is with a cuckold. However, there are terms in the beauty and vocabulary that work, like mistress. As noted above, wife would also work as well. I have seen cuckold wife, but that feels inelegant. Furthermore, I've seen couples call themselves a hot wife and cuckold to define a fully cuckold relationship. Because hot wife came about as a distinction from cuckold, this doesn't really work. However, it also makes sense to combine them because one word defines the woman and the other defines the man. Stag and Vixen are more concise and describe both the man and the woman in the relationship. By applying the label to the individuals, it is possible to separate the members of the couple. After all, it is possible for a stag to date someone who isn't a Vixen. Not all couples are into the same kinks, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've also heard some other terms used in the BDSM community, like cuckold dress or cuck queen or cuck cake, that I think go beyond just cuckold and hot wife and add some more texture. I do like the phrase stag and vixen though, because it is both individualistic, where you can use it separately for each person, and also because it is about the couple. And it's something that actually reminds me a little bit of like dom and sub, where someone can be dominant on their own or dominant in a relationship. And I think stag and vixen reflects that same kind of usage. I also like it because I think stag and vixen gets away from a lot of the more problematic elements behind cuckolding. There are things about cuckolding I cannot even say <laughs> in this video for fear of being demonetized, but just know there is a lot of historical baggage with that terminology. All of the whole time I've been giving definitions here, it is very much man being humiliated by a woman and 
involving marriage and being monogamous and not everyone wants something that is going to be so tight and so prescripted like that. And one of the things that really separates stag from cuckold is with a cuckold, it is about humiliation and emotional sadomasochism and having someone that makes you feel ashamed and unmanly and that you have no power and no control and it is a very submissive act for most people that are doing it. Whereas with being a stag, it's much more neutral to positive. It's not about the emotional sadomasochism of it. It's about feeling like, hey, I have a partner who's super hot and I want them to go out and do fun things with other hot people and I like that and it's not threatening to me. And it can also be about some other things too. I had some difficulty finding websites that described what a stag gets out of the experience, but I could guess with a couple of things here. One is I do think it can be about a sense of pride, that your status is increased because you were able to bag such a hot, awesome partner who can go out and have these amazing times with other people. Or it could be about the thrill of reclaiming, which is when your partner goes off and does fun things and then comes back and then you reconnect physically with them. And that way it can be about almost being the truly dominant one in the relationship because you know they're always coming back to you. They may have dalliances elsewhere, but you're the one at home. You're the one who is truly important. As a counterpoint though, I do wanna mention there are some people who do not like the term stag and vixen. And the reason why seems to be because either one, they think that it's always humiliating to have a partner run around on you and so there's no way to really be a true stag, which is like, eh, I don't really agree with that so much. But you know, I'm not one of these people, so maybe I don't get it. <laughs> But also some people don't like the term because they think it reflects an unnecessary separation. People are going like, hey, no, no, I'm not a cuckold. That's gross and bad. I'm this cool other thing. And I definitely relate to this because I have seen that happen personally with many other kink terms. And so I relate to being afraid that people are creating a second term to avoid an original term they don't like or make negative assumptions towards, but I do think when you look at the definitions of how people are using stag versus cuckold, it makes sense to have these be two separate things because the internal motivations and feelings behind them are so radically different. Now, before we go on to talk about other elements with this, I do wanna discuss some assumptions and misconceptions that people make about stag vixen dynamics because Oh boy, there are a lot of them. We already touched on how with this, there is a lot of heteronormativity and a focus on marriage and a woman being the one to step out on a man. And I do wanna say, though I couldn't come up with any concrete examples of how this would work or be different, Obviously, you can queer all of this if you want to. You can be whatever gender you want, use any labels or pronouns or titles you wanna use. You don't have to just stick with man and woman in a married monogamous relationship, though that is how most people do it. And it is worth mentioning that I don't believe personally as a polyamorous person that this makes you polyamorous to do, I think a lot of people look at any kind of non-monogamy and go, oh, that's polyamory. And people that are stag and vixen, I would not say are polyamorous because with polyamory, you are forming whole other complete relationships with other people. Whereas with stag and vixen, I can't speak for everyone who does it, but my impression is that you're doing it just for the date nights. You're not really, lingering and becoming friends and being romantic outside of those date nights. You have your little fun flings and you go home and the core romantic relationship is still this monogamous dyad between the stag and the vixen. It can be a little uncomfortable sometimes because when you're doing this in a really strict monogamous dyad, you are essentially using other people for your kink and so you have to be very careful about doing this in a way that is very open and honest where the bull knows what their role is and what the relationship is going to be like because you do not want to surprise someone with this dynamic. It is also obviously not cheating as long as everyone in the relationship, including the bull, knows it's happening. I know some people, I am sure out there, will do this in a way where it is not talked about because the emotional thrill of cheating adds something to it. And in my opinion, if you're doing that, 
this makes it not a kink and just being a bad person and not being a good partner. And also one thing I came across a lot when I was researching this is on the websites that are dedicated to just stag and vixen or cuckoldry, a lot of them are very adamant that stag and vixen has no power exchange in it and is entirely non-BDSM. In fact, for some people, they don't even consider it to be a kink, which I found fascinating because I was introduced to stag and vixen through the BDSM community, and there are definitely people who use it in more of a vanilla, non-kink way or non-BDSM way, and also people that will definitely use it for power exchange, which is why I'm making this video, is because yes, you can have a stag vixen relationship and also be doing a DS relationship too on top of it. With a cuckold relationship, the typical version is a submissive cuckold man with a dominant female woman, usually like a dominatrix or mistress type where it's very like cold and distant and mean or like a really voracious housewife, which is I think how we got the term hot wife originally. But with stag and vixen, I do think it maps onto dom and sub roles because with this, what you have is a dominant partner who is comfortable with their partner doing things with other people. And there are lots of dominant people who are very into the idea of either their partner going out with other people or them controlling who their partner goes out with. Where it's not about like getting permission in terms of like, hey, I wanna go do this, is it okay with you if I go do this? It's about like, hey, I want you to do this. You're going to do this for me as a service. Like it becomes a service act almost for the dominant stag partner to tell a vixen submissive partner to go out and go on dates and bring back partners. And a lot of people enjoy this and it connects with a maybe free use fantasy or CNC or just being shared. I think the main way I have seen this be talked about in kink circles is, oh, my partner shares me, my master shares me, my daddy tells me who I sleep with and I don't even know if people realize it's in any way related to cuckolding, but I do feel like there is a connection where instead of it being about like emotional masochism on the part of the cuckold, it's now about the dominance and control of the stag. Their ability to say, you're going to do this with this person at this time, this way, this place. And it can be that level of control. It can basically be, hey, you're gonna go to this hotel, you're gonna meet up with a guy named Greg, <laughs> go out, have a fun time. It can also look like going to play parties together and then picking out somebody for you there. And this might seem unusual, but in reality, I can recall two separate nonfiction BDSM books where they tell stories about how the submissive partner had a really big test in their relationship where their dominant partner said, hey, you're gonna go blow so-and-so, you're gonna go upstairs with this guy and do this thing. And it was a really big deal in the power exchange to do that. It was a test of their devotion and trust. And hopefully, from what I can remember, in both cases, it turned out to be a positive thing for the people involved. They wanted it, they enjoyed it, they had fantasized about it for a long time and then made it a reality. So if educational books about kink are talking about it, it must be pretty popular. And this can take on so many different role play flavors. It can look like, hey, I have this really hot girl and I wanna show her off, I wanna use her and have her basically demonstrate the skill I've given her on other people. It can be about being a master and a slave and the slave being used for everything from chauffeuring to giving baths to people all the way over to sexually servicing them. Or it can even be about having somebody who is a doll that is so objectified, they no longer even have a say in who they sleep with because they are just an object and why would they have a say in that? And sexuality is already a huge part of what people enjoy controlling in their DS relationships. So naturally, it makes sense that we would also expand in this direction. And it can be anywhere on the spectrum from light, fun, hey, go have a good time, sweetie type stuff, all the way over to it actually flipping the usual cuckold dynamic on its head, where instead of the cuckold being the one who is humiliated by the activities, 
it's the vixen who is being humiliated where they are being told to sleep with people they don't like don't know don't find attractive as a test of how loyal and devoted they are to the dominant partner i think this can also relate to things like forced by fantasies where the person is doing something they don't want to do air quotes because defining what you don't want to do in a bdsm power dynamic is a little bit counterintuitive but typically that means someone is doing something they don't really want to be doing but they enjoy it not because of the direct gratification they get or because they like the person they're doing stuff with but because of how much of an intense level of bonding and power exchange is involved in that act and how much it takes for somebody to be able to give up their autonomy in that arena. It's not really typical that you would hear this be referred to as stag and vixen. It does happen that way, but most people I know that do this call it something like being shared or their partner is called master or daddy or even bull sometimes, which is a little bit confusing because even though the bull is typically the dominant one, it's usually the outside partner who is called a bull. I've also heard the phrase, and I don't like this, alpha cuck, which I can't say it with a straight face. It makes me think of like Andrew Tate. <laughs> I can't explain why. It just makes me think of Andrew Tate for some reason. And from what I can tell, it mostly comes from the people who don't like Stag and Vixen because they think that when you are a stag, you are still being humiliated and that to say otherwise is denial. So not a fan of that one, but you will see it sometimes. So it is worth bringing up. Now, how would you get started exploring a stag vixen relationship? This can be difficult because if you are monogamous and you want to explore this, a lot of people are not going to be open to the idea. It's going to be a complete violation of what they want from a monogamous relationship. However, for other people, they might be willing to try it. And assuming they are, what you always need to do are three things. You have to have trust, you have to be an honest, open communicator, and you have to go slowly because this is a huge area for potential emotional landmines. And once you trigger those, they are very hard to undo and can do a lot of damage to the relationship. But assuming you're able to navigate those initial landmines and talk about it and be open and honest, I do have some ideas for how to start exploring this. I think it's always best to start by exploring it just in a fantasy. That could be sharing erotica, doing erotic texting with each other, watching movies together, sending pictures or memes that relate to the kink. It could also look like doing more verbal role play during otherwise vanilla activities, or just generally talking about what your fantasies look like. Because at this stage, you're just trying to make sure you're on the same page and want to get the same thing out of the experience or at least compatible things out of the experience. Now, when you wanna take it to the next level, that is more when you wanna bring it out into real life. That could be observing people at parties together, pointing out who looks hot or attractive or who you'd want your partner to have sex with. Now, with this, please be respectful. Do not say this to people's faces. I think a lot of people, from what I understand about allosexuals, they tend to comment on people they find hot or attractive, so it's not totally out of line to do at all, but just don't involve other people in your kink. Okay, it's really simple. Now, when you get into actually wanting to try this out for real, I think going to a BDSM party, you're not likely to have a lot of success. You are more likely to have success if you go to like a sex party, an orgy, a swingers event, as opposed to a kink party because, well, kink parties are not typically only about sex and most people are not going to be open to that type of cruising at most BDSM events. So going to something that's more for swingers or for orgies is going to be more likely to have what you want at it. Now, I will also say that when you are trying to do this in a more BDSM fashion, it might be harder to do it at like swinger events, but I think you're gonna have more success on there. Now, if you're not part of the BDSM community, but you do want to try this out, you're gonna have to try and find somebody to do it with, right? So what I recommend is looking at an app called Field, which I've talked about numerous times before on my channel, and they are really good if you have more of an 
alternative relationship style, be it open, polyamorous, kinky, whatever it is, they are pretty open to whatever relationship style that you want and you are probably not gonna get your account reported the way you would on like Tinder, OkCupid, or Hinge or something. So just be open, be honest, let the people know that you're talking to, what you're looking for, what the role would be in the relationship, all of that stuff. And then that's basically what you need. Now, there is just like one other thing I wanna mention that I haven't really talked about so far that I wanna clarify from earlier. One is that though it is not something that is implicitly polyamorous. You can be poly while being a stag and a vixen. It just would depend on what the relationship looks like. It's, it's that when you are a stag and a vixen, that by itself does not make you polyamorous, but you can be polyamorous while doing it, if that makes sense. I also wanna say that while it's more typical for the third in the relationship to not be as close as the didactic monogamous couple is, a lot of people do have ongoing relationships with the bull, which is very positive and friendly, where everyone gets along and knows each other. There's not really a limitation on like, if you're too close, it's not like a stag and a vixen relationship anymore. I would say it's more typical because of the underlying monogamy for most people. It is more comfortable to have the bull be more distant and have it be more like somebody you see occasionally or always a different person. But for some people, they do form a lasting bond with their bull. And it's more of like a triad thing as opposed to a dyad plus a third occasionally. You know what I mean? And also I want to say for the record that when you start exploring this, you might discover, hey, this isn't really my thing. It doesn't really scratch that itch I thought it might. And it is not really something I want to do in the relationship long term. It is totally okay that when you start exploring this, you start from a place of openness and then when you try it, it doesn't work. That happens all the time with kinks. So don't be afraid to say no and say, hey, I'm not really comfortable anymore. I thought I would be, but I'm not. Stick up for your own boundaries and it's okay for a fantasy to just stay a fantasy and not ever do it in real life. Or when you do do it in real life, decide to keep it in a fantasy from that point onward. And the last thing I wanna say here is I'm wondering if you all know of or could think of a more gender neutral BDSM power exchange specific term for stag and vixen because a lot of people that are in the cuckold and stag and vixen communities do not seem to like the power exchange connotations or usage by some people and I wanna be respectful of that while also acknowledging that people do use stag and vixen in BDSM in a power exchange way. So if you guys can think of any ideas for other labels or terms we could use instead, I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below. And on that note, that is everything I have to say in this video about stag vixen relationships. I hope that you all learned something and enjoyed it. I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below once again. Anything you think about this, comments, questions, your experiences, your opinions, I would love to know all of that. And if you have not already and would like to, please do subscribe. I have videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best way to do is Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.